Yeah, the belt kind of looks something like this. Hey, it's Oh my Dale. god, it must be the belt of Charles Xavier mind reading. Thank you very much for the follow. Hey, it's Dale. Welcome to the community. It does kind of look like him. Yeah, it's a, it is a very... It doesn't look that good. It's it's more of a, a ratty belt, but it does have a, a, a pretty big belt buckle on there with a, a huge head, but uh, the head isn't isn't bald on this belt. You know, the the uh, belt the on the buckle, the head sort of has like ratty hair, like what these Etons would have. Um, do, do, do I notice anything on the uh, belt as far as uh, that would give away its origin or? Uh, you can do a an Arcana check if you'd like. I'll, I'll let you do something like that in a tower. Alright. You can sense that this belt is kind of waning off a like a magical like a magical power. You can sense magic coming from this belt. Well, it looks like the belt might be of some import. Oh I'll, I'll keep it until we have a chance to study it further. Yeah, that makes sense. Wow, that's a hell of a belt. Uh, I just think we should take the south, south passageway and go and see if that links up with them elves. What was what was making all that noise and crying? Yeah, that's the yeah. direction we wanted to go. Does this look like it's sloping up, Dave? Uh, it does. Uh, towards the end of of this twenty-five foot chamber, it does seem like as the as this corridor turns to the east. It looks like it's starting to ascend up. Yes, it does. Okay. We're good to go. Then um, I'll just go ahead and stealth up and head on down here. Because I know that I suspect strongly that this goes where we were before and that there's probably going to be people down there. So do you want me to roll a stealth check before I go or when I get down there? Absolutely. Uh, uh, of course, I want you to give me a, a stealth. I check. thought you Any, might just give it to me anytime you know, that you're uh, like a freebie. Rogues get everything else for free. I'm like, yeah, sure. You can just go ahead and do it. You get it for free. Rogues get oh, everything thanks, else. What's one more? Zone? Thanks. It's not gonna hurt. <laughs> you know, <laughs> don't 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 be a hater. Oh, I'm not a hater. If I was a hater, I'd kill you already. All the way down there, and then she's gonna break wind <laughs> just at the worst possible time. <laughs> all of a sudden, you hear a. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse Alright, I make guys. my way down. <laughs> quietly, hopefully. Yeah, you think you're you're using the shadows to your advantage, and mm -hmm. as you start to ascend up, you make a couple turns, a couple twists, and you get to a door. Hey, uh, I want to, while she's doing that, let me just ask these guys real fast. Should I uh, disable this light that I have? Or are we trying to stealth up here? Or should I keep this light going? Well, keep it going for now, but just don't come down here. All right, I'll Unless stay. You, you well, I'm not going to gonna me, tell you. I don't Unless think we you're... have to worry about your light. I think uh, Widow will engage everything we see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, got it. I love it. So I think just so I don't blind people, I'll be back here. Oh, mm -hmm. Sorry, I just reached maturity for a second. All right. <laughs> okay. I'm looking at this door. Does it look... Uh, go ahead and check it for any kind of traps or anything like that. And that's sure. perception, give it right? Give a once over? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Give me, a, give me a once over on that door, sure. Or did I just do... Yeah, I did the right one, I think, yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, you're kind of looking at this. It's not a it's not a very good door. You could tell that there's a lock on the door, but it's not locked. Cuz you kind of have your, you know, the reflection of the light from uh Tiberius is kind of coming down. So you're using your thieves tools, your mirrors and and you know, picks and stuff and you you notice that the door is not locked. But it's not a very good lock. You could you could easily pick it if it was, but it's not. Okay. All right. I'm going to. Can I? Well, I'm assuming I, there's no way to see through it, so I'm just going to try to 
just open it just a crack so I can kind of at least just far enough for me to be able to see in there okay just one second I'll take your time trying to find those dragon tokens let's see lich lich dragon ready <laughs> yeah. so as you as you as you peer the door open you can see that it's a wooden floor you can see that uh, there is a little bit of light up here and you notice that there is uh, an individual that kind of walks by for a a split second uh, an individual that is wearing robes and carrying a, a staff and and but this individual that that is wearing robes it doesn't look like your run-of-the-mill type of cultist garb you know like the kind that you guys are carrying on you it doesn't it doesn't look like uh, that type of regalia okay well just for shits and giggles, I was going to do it anyway before you said anything. Actually, it was my next statement. I was going to kind of pull back a little bit, kind of ease the door closed, and I'm I'm a little gun shy now. You forgot to keep hitting the the uh, push to talk button on your major oh. thing that you were planning to do. Oh, and so I was going to I'm going to say to the other ones, do you think we should? There's there's obviously cultists ahead. Do you think that we should put on our robes? Or just go for it? How many cultists did you see? Just the one. Uh, we don't, I don't just, yeah, just kidding. More. I don't want there to might be more. I mean, we, we heard a conversation, so... We just killed three Ettons. I think we're okay against a bunch of cultists. Well, I didn't know if you wanted to try to get some information out of them or whatever. I, 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 fuck here's, it. here's what we can do. We can kill them, and then I'll speak with the dead. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or it's we can a win -win. take the last one prisoner. It's a win-win. We'll uh, take the last one prisoner. Or charm him, yeah. yeah. Let's just do that. Fuck it. Okay. <laughs> so the door busts open, correct? <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, using the figured. door open. All right. I'm going in for the, um, for the stealth maneuvers, and uh, seeing if I can surprise this guy. All right. Go you ahead know and do a. That. Go ahead and do a, a. So, when you're opening up the door, are you taking a little bit of the the grease from your thieves kit to kind of maybe yeah. grease the hinges and stuff? Also, hint, hint, I'm, I'm being see, careful. Now, if I was playing a rogue, I would kind of probably RP it out like that. But you know, you'd be uh, fixing every door in the place. Uh, oh, this door's a little squeaky. Uh, squeak, squeak, squeak. I oh, would be dee -bee, dee -bee, dee -bee, giving out my oh, little, you know, my little uh, little wet skin full of oil. Sure. Sure, why not? Little, so much little, little can of WD-40. Alright, yep, I'm I'm doing, you know, like you said, grease up the hinges a little bit, just trying to, to get this thing to open without, as silently idea, as possible. Thank right. you. Oh, grease up, yeah. that's genius. So, yeah, as you open up the door, you notice a lot of uh, individuals that are in shackles. You can see that they're their hands are shackled at the wrist. You can see that their feet are shackled. And you see that these shackles are basically embedded into the wall or on other metal rings that are on the wooden floorboards. Now you can see several tables in this area also that are sort of in the middle of this... Uh, what, it's definitely a, an elevated pad from the rest of uh, this large chamber and you see this robed figure that you had already seen he has his back towards you now there and and you could definitely tell that it is an elf cuz he sort of has his uh the hood he has the hood on his robe uh, on the on his robe up but it's kind of flared out to where you could tell it was an elf even though he has his back towards you now this other individual which is definitely uh an elf in a heavy type of armor notices the door open and he looks over your way and uh, he has his hand on the hilt of the sword which is still in its scabbard okay so the jig's up 
I'm assuming your invisible uh, thing is not working anymore because we fought. It probably. Kodos, yes, thank busy. you very much for the follow. Yeah. Kodos, thank you for All the right. follow. All right, well, since you know that we're here, I, I, I kind of look over at the other guys, let them know that. I just go ahead and walk in the door. Yeah, okay. go ahead. We'll you sure. walk into the door and the and the uh, individual just uh, kind of takes his hand off the takes his hand off of his sword and turns over towards one of these other uh, individuals and you can tell that all of these individuals that are shackled up and chained they all look to be uh, they all look like they've been I don't want to say tortured but they've been roughed up a little bit you know, a couple. You know, you see bruises on their cheeks. Maybe a little bit of a little bit of blood coming out the side of their mouth. And this uh, this elf actually turns to a a female that's sitting down, and she's shackled to the wooden platform. And uh, he kicks her. And when he and when he uh, kicks her, he says, "And you know what's going to be good for you if you try that again." This is a really, really gruffy sounding elf. Usually, usually the elves are are, are more mannered than this, but the, this elf definitely isn't the the, the run of the mill type of elf that you're used to encountering. And they're they're just going around the they're just going about their business, kind of just like. So is he like a you know? noble elf or a wood elf or do uh, I know? Drow. Well, let's see. Well, seeing that you just barged right in with this light. All of a sudden, oh. all of a sudden, the the where is that light coming from? And and the the mage turns around, and he says, "Do you see that magic? The, what what is that? That that's too bright to be fairy fire." And he he starts to really study and and walk closer to this very bright light that is over by the door. And the other, well, the, the knight or the, the elf that's uh, has a, he draws a sword. And he says, "What kind of sorcery is this?" Oh, I just, see. So we still are invisible. <laughs> they're still they're they're staring at the light, and he says, "What do you make of it? What do you make of this light?" Dave, can I put my sword into the mage's chuff? Uh, did you have his, Did you have your weapon out? I, I guess you would. Probably did. I'm gen I generally wander around with uh, with uh, my sword and my shield. Okay, sure. When he's we're down here. He's within uh, he's within attacking distance to you. Plus, his character never tucks in his shirt. It's very annoying, Dave. <laughs> if you would like to, uh, you would have advantage on your attack because they're not ex well. They're expecting something, but they're not expecting you to just you know uncloak yourself from this you know magical wreath that you have around your neck. Well, I'll strike it roughly. Knowing that we're invisible, I'm going to move past them. Okay. So you hit uh, with a with a sixteen. And, well, hold on there, but uh, he, uh, he attacks, slash, him, so. slash him across the leg just above oh, the knee. Not roll. doing a lot of damage. Well, yeah, go ahead and move back to where you were because uh, the the half orc just just stabs him, and then all of a sudden, you know, the he can see you. He goes, <gasps> "It's what type of mm, uh, invisibility?" And then the, you know, obviously the the elf knight already had his weapon drawn, and the caster, this this magician that you just stabbed, uh, he seems to be starting to speak and chant and and magical tongues and start waving his hands. So actually, uh, I'm going to do something. Really quick, I need to let's see one second. Dave, should we run in it? Should we roll initiative? Yeah. Yeah, you guys can go ahead and roll initiative. Done. Fifteen. Sixteen. Oh, good lord! All right. Well, I'll wait till everyone's dead, then I'll go. Uh, no. Well, yeah, actually, <laughs> I just managed to eat okay. you out. Okay, so as, as you give him with your sword, and, and you lance him pretty good, uh, really quickly he he says something in Elvish, uh, and a sort of like a magical ward appears around this, uh, this uh, wizard. 
Can I hit him with my second attack? So, uh, your your attack. Let's see. Your first attack was a. Uh, let's see. Hit for ten. It's uh no. Your the actual attack roll itself was a a sixteen. So, uh, yes, he he cast a shield. You see the ward come up around him. His armor class is still a 16, still a hit. You hit him for 10 slashing damage, and uh, it is uh, still your turn. He just interrupted you with that reaction. Oh, gosh. So is the damage absorbed by his shield? It's, uh, it is. No, 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 you still hit him, because you see him grimace and in, in pain. Good. Oh dear, missed. Alright, so your second attack with your multi-attack is a 15, which is a miss. So, let's see, uh, Tiberius, you can go ahead and go, because you all have the element of surprise, so Tiberius, you can you can do your uh, surprise round now. Okay, I, I don't know if, I mean, I think these guys got these characters here. I think what I, or they got the, they've got it. What I'd like to do is I'd like to release these nearest people that are in chains. I'd like to release them. Okay. What would that entail? So I'm so, going to walk over to this... Yeah, they have a, they have a shackle right on them. So And these, these shackles have a, uh, like a lock on the shackles. So you can try to, you can try to maybe break open with a strength check. You, uh, maybe you could do that. Probably not. They look to be pretty sturdy. Usually iron chains are pretty sturdy. Okay, so I, I see what you're saying. That it's pretty worthless for me to do that because I, I don't really have lockpick or anything. Uh, yeah, you, you don't have anything like that. But they are definitely all shackled. And, and like I said, you know, you could tell that these prisoners have, have been roughed up a little bit. And, you know, these two in particular, their shackles are embedded into the bedrock of the actual cavern itself. Okay, well, I'll go ahead and uh, I will flame blast the uh, wizard, the caster, the one that was chanting. I was looking to do silence on him, but it turns out that that's a ritual so it would take me too long to do. Yeah. I'm going to just, I'll just do a uh, not a flame strike, but just the the, the regular cantrip. All right. Now, also as you enter the room, uh, Shrump and Ve, you can see that on the very southern wall is a very large, what appears to be like a shrine. And it is of a uh, what appears to be a young female holding a like a bowl or a basin, and you can see that the water is dripping down from the ceiling, hitting on her head, hitting on the top of the the statue's head, and the statue's head and all of the you know the intricate detail of the statue is basically funneling this water into this basin or the bowl, and you can also see water kind of trickling because that is where most of the light is concentrated on this platform. Sure, there's a couple tables in the middle, but there's also quite a few candles uh, and a few sconces in the wall that have really, really dim uh, sort of like muted type of maybe magical lights that are coming from these sconces. Alright, so uh, Shrimp You've got your uh, your attacks. Well, uh, let me let me uh, do my attack. I was waiting yep. for you to say what you were doing. Yeah, sorry, sorry. about that. Tiberius, you're not gonna do that. So, you, oh wow, the the dexterity check of the let's see, you attack the the mage. It was successful. So there is no effect on the wizard or the mage or whatever it is. You you know you could ve you could tell that this was a basically a shield spell that activated on this elvish wizard. Alright, so anything else for you there, Tiberius? Any bonus action? Anything like that? Uh, yeah, I'll bonus action. I'll put that uh, over the mage. I'll put the uh, giant hammer. Oh, that's the whole point My of a ritual. Weapon. Hi, Peter. That's the whole point of a ritual. Oh, fire is just snuggle deep. <laughs> Yeah, the, the hammer basically misses and then poof, disintegrates. Poof, sort of like the magic was nullified. So go ahead and eat your okay. spell slot. Yeah, I've got that now. 
crit fumble on the hammer. All right, that's it for me, sir. Dissipates. Anytime, uh, anytime fumbles and stuff like that, I, I always usually penalize the player. Basically lost a spell slot, no big deal. All right, so let's see. Uh, all of these... Uh, let's see. Let's go to... The prisoners are now getting riled up. They're starting starting to, you know, say, Hey, help us! Get us out of here! Help us! Look out for the dragon! Watch out for the dragon! You know, things like that. Watch out for the... Watch out for the evil sorcerer in here! Now, next is a, uh... Widow. You're Take up. off one of those sneak attacks, Steve. I don't know how I ended up with two sneak attacks on there. No, because you're you're flamboyant on your on your sneak attacks. You're not exactly. anymore, and you do not have a sanctuary, I believe. How long does sanctuary oh, okay. last? No, Dave. She doesn't have sanctuary. You may okay. remove that. Okay, it's to the end of the encounter. I thought so. Oh, okay, yes, sir. Yeah, just the one sneak attack. That's fine. Alrighty, so I take a step up and uh, assassinate this this mage and hopefully if you take him out in one shot that'd be nice the uh mage armor is that hourly or is that eight hours or is that extended or, or what is it mage armor or shield they're, your they're your different. mage hour you no, your major yeah i know they're different but your mage armor. oh oh <clears throat> eight hours yeah okay all right very good Oh, right. very nice. So uh, you're attacking Holy the shit. you're attacking the uh, the mage. The mage. Okay. Yes, yep. and I just critted. It doing has it. not. It had a reaction, but I'm not going to count the reaction as an action. So you uh, crit with your uh, with your attack with your stabby stabby. So very nice. Let's uh, go ahead and roll some damage on this elvish wizard. And this robe is beautiful. It looks like uh, this robe probably cost uh, a pretty penny. A pretty gold piece. <laughs> Alright, so as you appear out of the shadows and basically impale this, uh, right. yeah, this wizard, uh, basically you run him all the way through, hit him in I a mean, perfect like spot. It's almost like I just came out of nowhere and just ran my sword right through him. That's it. Assassination. He falls yep. over. He just slides right off the end of your sh of your uh, short sword. Dead. And you have blood dripping off of the end of your blade. Nice crit for 52. Very nice. Oh, thank you. And so I'm a little concerned about this guy over here. I, th I think he can pack a wallop, so I'm not actually going to engage him just yet. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back up a bit. Behind the mage. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> You're going to save someone alive. That's wonderful. Sorry about that. Pass the buck. So I'm going to cast Charm Person on the fighter here. Okay. So as you go to cast Charm on the the knight here in armor, and it is it looks like beautiful armor, intricately you know, carved and etchings, he sets his way, he just drops his sword. Drops his sword, drops his shield at the same time. They rattle on the ground and he just he throws his hands up and he says I want to know trouble. Oh, well as I see him do that I'll save a spell slot. He says, uh, I want to know trouble. I'll take my necklace off. I'm going to stalk over to him, kick his uh, kick his weapon away from him towards towards one of the uh, one of the prisoners, or just generally away from him. Okay. Who are you? What's going on here? Uh, he says, uh, "My name is my name is Jail, and Jail as in J A E L L." So that's how he you know that's how it sounds as it's pronounced. That's so, ironic. My name is. He's uh, a he's a jailer, and he's Jail, and. Uh, uh, this isn't this isn't what you think. This isn't uh, this isn't what you think. I've I've got nothing to do with this. I'm I'm just uh, mm. I'm just tell us, tell us watching these. 
I'm just I'm just watching these uh these chained up individuals and and you know you can hear these the individuals are are screaming at him look what he's done to us he's he's been beating us and he keeps he keeps saying shut up you and shut up you and and yeah so they're basically all you know all of the the captives and prisoners they're all basically telling you that this guy has kind of been beating the shit out of him give us the key uh, certainly, uh, uh, certainly, and he, and he has a little little ring on his on his belt, and he unsnaps it, and he kind of tosses it over towards you. I'll I'll spin the I'll, I'll throw the keys over to Tiberius. Seeing as Tiberius was the one investigating the shackles and what have you. All right, that sounds great. So I'll spastically try to catch it, bobble it for a couple of things, and then uh, then reach out and get behind me and try to uh, use the key to start wheeling the chain out from these imprisoned elves. All the time ensuring them an elvish. All the time ensuring them an elvish. I'm going to investigate this dead mage. Okay. Yeah, now, what you notice, you notice that these are all, these are all wood elves. You can distinctly tell that these are all wood elves. And, you know, this chain is just massive. It, I mean, it, it goes between, you know, all of their, you know, all of their shackles. And so you're pulling the chain out. So you're taking care of freeing all of the captives. It's probably going to take you about about 10 minutes, 15 minutes to do this. Okay. So I'll start walking around while you guys are talking. Sure. And, and well, redoing Tiberi- each of these. Tiberius, uh, sure. bring one of those sets of manacles over here. I think I've got someone who needs to be secured. Oh. I'll toss him. I'll toss oh. him some manacles off the first guys here. My half orc friend, there's there's no need to do that. Uh, I am not going to attack. I I know when the odds are greatly stacked against me, you will have no problem uh. with me. I and know we're not going to have a problem with you. The other prisoners are yelling, "Yeah, shackle him, shackle him! Look what he did to us!" Yeah, I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll shackle him. Is his armor? Is it uh, is it like plate? Is it? Uh... It looks nice and shiny and sexier than uh, it mine. Is, it is definitely of a, of an elvish quality. Now, as for better than yours, you would have no clue. Uh, but he is wearing plate mail armor. So you know the, you know the armor has some value for sure. I mean, what is what is uh, plate mail on 5e? What is it? Base God knows about five at least five hundred, five hundred, five thousand, something like that. I'll have to take a take a look at it really quick. Well, so take it anyway. I have a portable hole, so we can always just toss it in there. Excellent, excellent idea. Yeah, strip your armor off. Yeah, plate mail's a uh, fifteen hundred. So it, it's definitely got a uh, quite a bit of value to it. So the the office is uh 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 okay. So he starts to, you know, start unlocking all of the, fa- the, the, you know, all of the straps, you know, straps, and the, you know, all the other zippers for all of the leather. He starts, the zippers. You know, well, there are there. There was there. There were. Well, I not, just. I don't want to say your traditional it. type of steel zipper. I'm talking like a, like a zipper that kind of stitches the leather together that that holds the foundations of it, where the plate is actually attached to it. Anyways, never mind. That's another story. I That's okay. I mean, you you know more than I do. It's just I imagined them like you know yeah, unzipping f- the front of it, I taking a, it off like a coat. Yeah, I got a good friend that uh, is in the uh, medieval time show, and he has uh, several suits of authentic plate mail, and uh, he would always invite me over to the park when he and his buddies when they when medieval times is closed he would invite me to the park when they were getting together and I'd watch him actually literally bash the shit out of each other with real swords and flails and morning stars and I'm going, holy shit. He goes, you want to try this? And I said, fuck you, I'm not doing this. You are... Well, that, yeah. that's I, awesome. I, used to, I used to do that as well. It's it's an awful lot of fun. Yeah, uh, yeah. a couple well, of those I'm guys not... got hurt a couple times, crazy. I was no, a little it's, nervous. It's, it's Dave. quite easy. I've seen somebody have a like a broken hand from getting hit just too carelessly, too hard. Yeah, I thought for sure. Really, I used to go there and watch him get undressed. <laughs> I was like, whoa, 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 TMI, dude, TMI. <laughs> so crazy. All right, so yeah, th- this guy, you've got him uh, pretty much restrained, and he's got an 